I'm not gonna say that this is the most important video that I've ever done, but I will say if you're not aware of what I'm about to talk about in this video, you are in deep trouble. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and this video is going to be one of the most awkward that I've ever had to record, but it's also probably one of the most important. The reason that it's awkward is I'm going to be really tiptoeing around a lot of things because there are certain words and ideas that uh, can really put a barrier up for a video here on YouTube, and I'm hoping that this can get out to people and not get blocked. And that's part of what we're talking about in this video. That's what the topic of this video is, is information that you might uh, be being denied access to. Now what prompted this uh, whole video idea, video idea in the first place is that I've been getting a lot of uh, messages from people, both private communications, emails, and also just comments uh, you know, in my video comment uh, feeds, uh, where people are kind of concerned, people who are fans of my channel, you know, kind of appreciate what I'm doing, kind of care about me, uh, you know, as kind of like an internet friend, and they were worried about me because they got the impression that I was kind of unaware of a lot of really important events going on in the world. Uh, you know, a lot of the videos that have been uh, being released by my channel lately are about like, you know, decorating and sealing floors or, you know, you know, food preparation. I, I think I even did one recently about like uh, a review of kitchen knives. Uh, and those are the kind of vi uh, videos that people are seeing. And in addition, I release video shorts to like the com uh, the comedy opening of, you know, some of my videos I release as their own standalone alone shorts. So people were seeing like kitchen knife reviews and like comedy shorts. And, you know, they were reaching out to me and being like, Praxis, you know, there are some things going on in the world and it seems like you're not really aware of them because you host a, I'm gonna have to spell this out, a P-R-E-P-P-I-N-G channel and you're not talking about all these important things. So maybe you're not thinking about all these important things, maybe you don't know about them. I definitely know about them and I even do a lot of videos on them. But a lot of those videos that are on those topics that are considered the types of things that are unpalatable, uh, they get, well, you know, what's referred to here on YouTube as being shadow banned. Now, I know a lot of those uh, channels that you might watch, you know, again, this P-R-E-P-P-I-N-G channels, you know, a lot of the hosts are, they, they go off a lot about like, oh, you know, I know my, my channel's being shadow banned, you need, to, you need to help me out and spread the word, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, I, you know, I'll look at a lot of these, these uh, channels and they've got like hundreds of thousands of subscribers and each video is like, you know, tens of thousands of views, hundreds of thousands of views. Some, some of these are like over a million subscriber channels. And I, I don't know what their ver version of a shadow ban is, but here's my version of a shadow ban. Uh, here on YouTube, uh, one of the many reasons that a video will either get recommended to people or not recommended is uh, based on what's called the click-through rate. Click-through rate is uh, referring to uh, whether someone clicks on a thumbnail or not. If you have a thumbnail and you uh, display it for two different people and one person clicks on it and one person doesn't click on it, one person watches the video, one person doesn't, that's a 50% click-through rate. That's really good actually. Uh, a click-through rate of anywhere between 10 to 15 percent is considered a healthy click-through rate for your channel. My channel usually has somewhere between 25 and 50 percent click-through rate and I've even had some videos that are 75 percent click-through rate. That is crazy crazy good. So you think well these videos they are of interest to people they must be the types of videos that YouTube promotes right? Yeah, these are the types of videos that shoot up and up and up and then bang, hit some kind of some kind of a glass ceiling at just a little before or just a little after a thousand views and then they are just killed, they're dead. Uh, YouTube stops promoting them in any way. That is my version of what a shadow ban is. You can have videos about topics that are uh, you know, very interesting to people, but they hit that ceiling and then they're, they're just dead. And most of the videos that I do that are on these uh, topics that are considered I'm not sure what word to use here. You know, we live in a allegedly free country and to have to tiptoe over all these different words. I, I, I know YouTube is a private platform. It's not, you know, government speech. I can go and publicly, you know, say different things. But seeing as these are, these platforms are sort of like, you know, public forums and they're a way that a lot of people in the public get their information. They kind of act like the like the old agora, uh, you know, the, uh, of, the, of Greece, you know, where people would share ideas, you know, it's, it's you know, YouTube and social media. And you got to tiptoe over your words. So anyway, 
when I'm, I'm talking about one of these uh, topics that is not considered the types of things that are palatable for people to talk about, uh, you know, the videos just get crushed and consequently people think that I'm not thinking about them. And I'm a little concerned that, you know, I know most of you guys, you probably are subscribed to lots of different P-R-E-P-P-I-N-G channels. I'm, uh, and a lot of these channels, for some reason, don't seem to have any trouble getting their information out. Uh, but some of you guys might not be. I, I know that my uh, channel, uh, in terms of the, this P-R-E-P-P-I-N-G, uh, let's just call it the, the P word from now on. Uh, you know, in, in terms of my channel being in that P word genre, uh, it's, it's kind of like left leaning, it's kind of progressive. Uh, you know, that, that's sort of where I, I came from is, you know, those are my people, you know, the, the liberals and the progressives. That's why I'm really hard on them when I see them acting like idiots, uh, which, I see a lot of that lately, <laughs> and uh, you know some of you guys might not be uh, subscribing to some of the other uh, channels, and maybe because I'm doing like knife review videos and painting my floor, you're not maybe to some degree aware of the incredibly effed up. Yeah, I don't have any problem uh, uh, abbreviating that one. Effed up situation of the world right now. Right, right now, the world is in a really, really, really dire state right now. Uh, the fact that you're seeing knife videos from me and you're seeing, you know, paint my floor videos doesn't mean that I'm not aware of these things and it doesn't mean you shouldn't be aware of these things. We are in a really preca precarious situation right now. Uh, about uh, nine or ten hours ahead of, uh, you know, here uh, in the United States, on the other side of the world, world I'm trying to code this because I'm not sure, like, if I say the country names, you know, that might flag things. Um, uh, you know, there's this WAR going on and while a lot of people are acting like this thing is just about to run out of steam, it is not. It is revving up every single day. I mean, the past 72 hours is D-R-O-N-E, A-T-T-A-C-K-S, escalating, escalating, escalating. Uh, civilians uh, and kids uh, starting to be at and uh, it is it's really ratcheting up. That is not going to go away. That is not going to go away. That might be one of those one out of 10 predictions that I make that's not correct. Usually I give myself probably somewhere around a 90% track record if I think something's gonna happen. Usually seems like it's a nine out of 10 ch uh, chance that's gonna uh, happen. I could be wrong about this, but every part of me says that, that the conflict that is brewing there is not going to resolve itself. It is going to blow up in some way, shape or form. And you know, it. It's inevitable, I, I think. I mean, nothing's inevitable. I mean, uh, you know, there's a great Kennedy speech where he talks about like these problems that we face are made by man. You know, it's in the '60s, so he didn't say by humans. Uh, you know, they're made by man, by humans. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, fair being fair. You know, most of these actually are made by men. But <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, because of that, because they're made by humans or men, uh, they can also be solved by humans or men. Maybe not by men. <laughs> But, um, you know, because these problems are made by humans, they can be solved by humans, but I don't see any indication that humans are up to that, that task, up to that challenge. Uh, you know, and just beyond all of that geopolitical uh, stuff, uh, environmentally, things are spinning out of control. If you're a liberal, uh, a liberal or a progressive that watches this channel, then you're probably someone that has been an early adopter of the idea that we have a changing climate and that humans are probably playing a role in that since one of the drivers of climate change is the, uh, the mixture of gases in our atmosphere. N nothing controversial about that. Part of what determines climate is the mixture of gases that is in the atmosphere. That's why uh, Venus has a runaway uh, greenhouse effect because of the mixture of gases that are in its atmosphere. And if we tweak the mixture of gases in our atmosphere, we will tweak, guess what? The climate. So if you are a you know, liberal or progressive, uh, you probably are already an early adopter of the idea that the climate is changing, that humans play a role in that, and you might have been listening to some of the scientists' dire warnings over the past, you know, several decades about if we don't do X, Y, and Z by this date, you know, there are going to be consequences, a lot of bad consequences. Uh, and we got to that date, we didn't do X, Y, and Z. They make another date and they say, you know, you know, we really mean it this time and we miss that, we miss that, we miss that, we miss all the deadlines. We are not solving this problem. If you believe in science and scientists, and I know that after the last several years of COVID, uh, you know, that throws a lot of question into that. Uh, you know, wherever there is money, there is, uh, you know, a 
a reason to maybe bend the truth or you know shy your eye away from this fact and focus more on that fact which is more uh, you know supportive of industry but there ain't a heck of a lot of money to be made on not selling things and what's driving uh, the changing of our climate is selling stuff you know selling energy products that are changing the climate selling you know uh, you know other products that are creating pollution that's a whole other thing you know we see uh, you know pollution in the state here in the United States we had a T R A I N C R A S H in O H I O and you know again my 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 peeps my, you know, my, my friends, the progressives, the liberals that are in power right now, the people running the Environmental Protection Agency, come out and say, oh yeah, all these dangerous chemicals, these uh, chemicals that have, oh, I thought a tree was crashing back there. There's uh, just some ice coming off a tree hitting the roof. Uh, all these dangerous chemicals that, you know, we have all these, uh, you, know, you know, steps and rules for how you're supposed to treat them and handle them and transport them. Uh, suddenly now they're in the environment. No big, it's no big thing. Don't worry about it. You know, um, things are getting bad, and at this point, I, I think anybody who is in control, that has a brain in their head, realizes that this car is going off the cliff, and clearly there's not, there may not be the ability, there may not be the ability to stop it at this point, but there clearly isn't the will, and anybody with a brain who is in charge mu must be aware of that. I think. So the messages that we are getting are the messages of trying to calm people down and prevent people from panicking. The world is in an incredibly dire state. Pollution everywhere. W-A-R everywhere. Um, you, know, you know, just the, the, uh, the fallout from the, uh, can I say that word? I was using it poetically, but uh, I don't know. F it. Um, you know, just, just the fallout from the OHIO. Uh, uh, event, uh, you know, it, you know, it's being played down by the the agency that's supposed to be protecting our environment. Um, but I mean, that is going to have hum huge ramifications. I mean, people who are cleaning it up are getting sick. Don't worry, it's not dangerous. You know, <laughs> people who are cleaning it up who are getting sick. People, who, uh, you know, who've moved back to the area are getting sick. But even if you don't live in the area, and even if you're not involved in the cleanup, that stuff spread all over the place. It's still spreading in small. Uh, uh, you know, uh, amounts, it is sprinkled over the landscape. It is going to get into the plants. The plants are going to get into the animals. The animals are going to get into our food supply. There are dairy cows out there. The dairy cows are going to be eating the grass that absorbed these chemicals, uh, you know, or whatever else. It's in their, you know, it's in their water, it's whatever. It gets into their bodies. It gets into their milk. That gets into cheese. The cheese gets, uh, you know, sent out. At this point, the cheese that's in the grocery store that is like, you know, the aged stuff, like aged cheddar and stuff, it's just, it's still okay from that stuff, not from all the earlier pollution that, you know, it's, uh, you know, we've just been piling and piling and piling on top of. But uh, you know, the, the cheese that's available in this in the grocery store at this point, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, that stuff was packaged before this happened. But do you want to be buying cheese from cows that were eating the grass that was absorbing the chemicals? Uh, you know, and this stuff is going to persist in the food supply. For years, for decades, forever, a lot of these chemicals. Things are getting really, really bad. Environmentally, with you know the climate change, you know, I, like I was uh, mentioning earlier, if you are a liberal or a progressive, and uh, you you know, believe in the idea of climate science, and you believe in the idea of you know scientists, and I get off on the tangent, you know, when we were talking about COVID and you know how that threw a lot of doubt into. You know, uh, you know whether you can always uh, you know trust scientists, and that was a thing during COVID. Uh, there were a lot of, you can just say it, there was a lot of misinformation being issued out by the government. That is common knowledge at this point. The go government said, you know, you don't need masks. You know, then they said, okay, you do need masks, but you can just make these like, you know, junky, you know, cloth ones that have big holes on the top uh, that has like God knows, you know, how many holes in the front because, you know, there's no kind of a, like a tight mesh there. And then they said, oh, well, you know, we were wrong about that. You actually need the N95s. And then like it was airborne and it wasn't airborne. And, uh, the natural immunity thing, I think, is it's official that natural immunity uh, is actually, you know, in some instances, for some of the variants, is, you know, more effective, you know, so, I mean, there was a ton of misinformation coming out of the government and, and so many of the agencies, uh, coincidentally, all that just pointed towards, you know, making money for Big Pharma. I, I'm sure it's, just, I'm sure it's just, a, just a coincidence that all the mistakes that they made all just so happened to tip towards, you know, making more money for Big Pharma. Um, but um, the thing is, is if you looked at the actual research, if you looked at the actual papers, and I did, 
I didn't just listen to what the, uh, the, the conclusion, what the summary is. You know, you know, we did this study and the summary is you should do X, Y, or Z. I actually read the summary. I, I'm sorry, I actually read the study. And so many of those studies, if you read them, the summary would say one thing, and then you go down into the data, and the data says something very different. The scientists were not issuing out, at least as far as I can tell, junk data. The data was real, but they were spinning it. You know, I, I think people figured that most people don't actually want to read a study. At best, they're probably not even going to read the summary of the study. But for, you know, maybe some people are going to read the summary. So the summaries got tweaked. The data didn't get tweaked. So you really, I believe, still can trust scientists to do science, collect the data, and provide the data to you. But if you're too lazy to actually look at it, that's where you come into the problems. You know, so, so many people were like, uh, you know, science let us down and the scientific community let us down. Yeah, you know, a lot of it did because they didn't want to lose their jobs and they knew that they would lose their jobs and many did lose their jobs by, uh, you know, expressing what they, uh, you know, felt was the take home from all that data, but they didn't change the data. If you look at the data, the data tells a true story. That's true of COVID, and I feel it's the same with climate change. There were so many deadlines where scientists warned us, if you don't change X, Y, or Z by such and such a date, you know, you're going to have the consequences of that. And we kept missing all of these deadlines. And, you know, I know, I know a lot of uh, uh, bits in the media will talk about like, uh, well, I'm not sure how much of the uh, background you can see around me there's a lot of snow around me uh, and like every time a snowflake would fall you know there'd be some you know conservative uh, media outlet to be like well, it snowed so much for climate change you know I mean the reality is, is that climate change you know creates more warmth more warmth puts more humidity up into the atmosphere more humidity up in the atmosphere that's moisture you know water uh, more moisture and water up in the atmosphere will actually promote more precipitation and sometimes that comes down to snow if the temperature is below 32 degrees um, but you know, while there have been a lot of people talking about like, well, where, where, all, where are all these, you know, uh, environmental changes that the scientists have been warning about, it's actually been worse. In terms of a lot of the modeling, a lot of the modeling we've been seeing has been kind of conservative. And uh, the reality of what has been going on has actually been worse than a lot of the models. Uh, so, you know, where scientists were, were warning us, you know, you need to do X, Y, or Z by this date, or these are going to be the consequences. We've crossed that. And the consequences that we've seen are actually worse than what they warned about. And I think that's going to continue to be the case. I think scientists like the rest of us are kind of human beings and we kind of don't like to think that things are going to be the worst case scenario. But so far, a lot of those predictions, uh, you know, it's actually been worse. And that's the reality of all this. I think I could go on and on, but uh, we're in a really awful situation right now. And you really need to start getting ready for that, uh, you know, by any means necessary at this point because things are going to get really, uh, really real uh, really quickly. And I think that it is going to be a very fast transition at some point. You know, I, I think a lot of this stuff, it's kind of slow burn. It's like the, the, infrastructure in the, United, uh, the infrastructure in the United States where it's like you lose one bridge here, you lose one bridge there. It's not like one day all the bridges just collapse. Uh, but at some point, I believe we're going to get kind of to a tipping point, uh, you know, with resources and scarcity and conflict, uh, where it's going to become really apparent really quickly uh, that maybe you should have been doing more and maybe you should have been doing it faster. I know change and like, you know, moving out to the sticks like me, it's, you know, a lot of people see that as not being very realistic, you know, uh, because it's, I mean, it's huge to, to make a big life change like that. Um, but here's one way of looking at it. Um, let's say you are, you know, you're working late at the office some some night you know you're you're working at the office you got a really really important uh you know whatever document that needs to be done to to get a you know a, a critical client for your company if you don't get that thing done that night uh you know your your company is going to be in ruin uh you know is that a good time to take a break just you know leave your desk and uh you know just walk away from all of it no that'd be absolutely crazy to do well, let's say there's a building fire <laughs> i know it's really unrealistic uh, to just step away from that really critical document that you're working on. There's going to be consequences of you stepping away from that really important document because it's critical to the survival of your company that you get th that thing done. You need to secure that client. But the building's burning. And I think it's important to understand the severity of the, of the challenge, the, of the threat that we're facing right now. Because uh, if you don't understand the magnitude of what is coming our way, you're not going to properly balance things. Yes, it's super important to finish that document to keep that client, but is it worth burning to death and being dead? You got to make that, that calculation. And I think at some point we are going to feel like 
we are trapped in a burning building and we're really going to wish that we had gotten out of it. Now, that doesn't mean that move, you know, moving out to a place like this and you know, up, upending your life is going to solve all your problems. Uh, you know, I face a lot of the same problems as you guys do. I go to the grocery store. I don't grow all my own food. I go to the grocery store. I'm having to think about like all, all the toxins that are in our food. It's not you know, just stuff from that OHIO. You know, uh, you know, situation. You know, there are just toxins everywhere, and the fish. You know, the mercury and plastics. And, you know, everything is everywhere. But um, uh, but you can definitely make your life better, and you can remove a lot of the dangers by you know taking some steps now. And that's about all I can say. It is a really bad situation right now. And even though I do videos about painting my floor and you know kitchen knives and things like that that doesn't mean I'm not aware of it that doesn't mean that stuff's not real and you ought to take this stuff really seriously too because if you don't there may be a day when you're really kicking yourself because the fire the building I think is on fire that's it thanks for watching hey YouTube preppers if you enjoyed this video you're probably also gonna like this video because it's about one of those topics that's completely inane and has nothing to do with anything particularly important but it's fun